Honda Clarity FCV Review. Labeling its first hydrogen fuel cell car, the first such car made available to members of the public, no less dash Clarity in 2008 ranks among Honda's bolder recent decisions. Doubtless, it was plucked from the marketing ether to echo the remarkable truth of the clear, semi-clean water trickling from the model's tailpipe, because the alternative intimation is surely a reference to the brand's strategic foresight, and its steely-eyed dedication to a zero-emissions path that leads inexorably to the moral and technological high ground. There's no small irony in option B despite others joining Honda on the fuel cell bandwagon, almost a decade of progress has not resulted in much more clarity than we encountered the first time around. Hydrogen, as a viable alternative fuel, continues to promise much and deliver precious little. As before, infrastructure, the method of conveniently refueling a car that runs on the stuff, remains a thorny issue simultaneously pricked by a lack of willpower, interest and investment. In London, one of the biggest, richest and most populous cities in the world, there is now a grand total of five places to pump compressed gaseous hydrogen into a fuel tank. That plainly isn't enough. However, that is not Honda's fault nor precisely its problem. After all, the second generation of the Clarity, much like the first, is not about to appear in a UK dealership with a price sticker in its window. Instead, the car will be trialled in limited numbers as part of a continuing demonstration project as the manufacturer builds towards having electrified powertrains in two-thirds of all the cars it sells by 2025. So why this road test? Well, like the Toyota MRI we tested, Honda's latest water emitter promises to edge the holy grail fuel cell tech that bit closer to real-world viability, with what it claims is the longest driving range of any zero-emissions vehicle. While that might sound like planning for a moon visit with a pogo stick jump, we indubitably need proof that the horse works before anyone commits to building the stables. Consequently, the more persuasive the new clarity manages to be, the clearer the future might conceivably get. Honda Clarity FCV Design and Styling Although much has changed beneath the Clarity's skin, the skin itself has remained familiarly unorthodox. European efforts to slide zero-emissions technology under the comfort blanket of established styling language apparently carries no weight with the Japanese. The Clarity much like the Mirai, strains hard for an ugly duckling futurism that frumpily conveys its divergence from internal combustion. As ever, this might conceivably work in Santa Monica or Tokyo, but not so much in Soli Hull or Tamworth. Of course, functionally, the clarity is less about pleasing the eye than it is soothing the surrounding airflow. There is an awful lot of channeling and ducting going on in the name of aerodynamic efficiency just as the car's shape is partly dictated by the packaging requirements of the underside. Developments made in this regard are at the vanguard of the new model's improvements, most notably in the downsizing of the fuel cell stack, which allows it to be housed under the bonnet and not in an intrusive transmission tunnel, as it was previously. This means that three can now sit in the back, no mean feat when there are also two hydrogen tanks and a lithium-ion battery to accommodate. The tanks are smaller in physical capacity than before but the contents are kept at twice the pressure, so they are capable of storing almost 40% more fuel. With the tanks in the back, under the boot floor and rear seats, the battery pack is beneath the front seats and itself produces 50% more output than its predecessor. Alongside the better energy storage required for greater range, the Clarity's energy production has been enhanced. Condensing the size of the fuel cell stack by a third has not decreased its output. In fact, the electric power per cell has increased by 50%, partly thanks to the introduction of a two-stage compressor that boosts air supply by 70%, while being 40% smaller than the pump it replaces. By delivering it more voltage, the main drive motor's output improves, too, with peak torque now 17% higher, at 221 pounds foot, and a maximum rotational speed of 13,000 revolutions per minute, the highest of any Honda fuel cell vehicle to date. 
To make things even easier on the fettled high-tech, the manufacturer has sought further efficiency gains in the Clarity's construction. Its chassis remains bespoke and has a much higher proportion of aluminium, composites and ultra-high tensile steel than would typically be devoted to a mainstream product. This doesn't prevent the car from being the best part of two tons, but by weighing roughly the same as the lower-powered Mirai, the Clarity can be claimed to be on the edge of the fuel cell envelope. On the Clarity FC V interior. The challenges of finding space for hydrogen storage, a fuel cell stack, an electric motor and plenty of high-voltage power electronics has often prevented the various hydrogen fuel cell prototypes the world has already seen from being practical cars, even though many were large enough to be expected to be practical. The Clarity goes some way to correcting that. This is a big saloon with a big cabin that'll house four larger adults in plenty of comfort, or three kids across the back seat at a push, whereas Amra is a strict four-seater. Our tape measure put typical rear leg room, our standard benchmark of what's left in row 2 when the driver's seat is set for a meter of front leg room, at 810 millimeters, more than you get in a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes-Benz E-Class, and showed head room to be comparable with those cars, too. Boot space is more disappointing because the location of one of the hydrogen tanks means you get limited overall loading length and there's also no seat folding or through loading facility. Overall space is 334 liters, and although the boot is full width and of a good depth, there isn't room to load long items like push chairs and suitcases long ways. If you were making an entirely typical, rational assessment of the car's interior ambience, equipment level and material quality, you'd probably observe that a customer spending upwards of £40,000 on a saloon car has a right to expect better, but remember, this isn't a car with a fully realized business case and nor is it the average big saloon. Many of the car's fixtures and fittings would certainly need a bit of a material uplift in order to cut it in the mid-sized executive class, although not all of them. Honda is committed to the idea of environmental sustainability and has opted for an ultra UE trim for the dashboard and door cards. This material is made out of recycled polyester via a very energy-efficient manufacturing process and looks and feels very natural. For a Clarity owner, it would never do for a living thing to be harmed in the making of the car's seat upholstery, synthetic leather, but pleasant enough, or its veneer. A patterned rosewood film trim made to resemble real wood. The veneer isn't too convincing, but it is very much like the trim fitted by Tesla, perhaps not entirely coincidentally. The Clarity's glossy 8.0 in touchscreen will be familiar to Honda buyers, and it transfers from other models with all its established strengths and weaknesses. In the plus column, it's very legible and mostly easy to use. Among the negatives, its responsiveness can be inconsistent and there isn't a car tester alive who prefers a made-up haptic volume control to the physicality of an old-fashioned dial. Somewhat unexpectedly, the model also features Honda's 540 watts, 12-speaker premium audio system, although typically it's the fuel cell power monitor at which you'll have any spare attention directed. The monitor displays the status of the car's powertrain and the associated storage, with energy use being delineated as a glowing blue ball graphic that changes size according to usage. The navigation also has the capacity to show real-time status information about the nearest hydrogen stations, although a post-it note that reads coming soon would suffice in most of the UK. Honda Clarity FCV Performance it's very early days to have many benchmarks for production-ready fuel cell cars but, thanks to the Mirai Road test, we do have some, and so compare we must. And although it didn't beat the Mirai in every respect for which we recorded objective figures, the Clarity outperformed its rival in most. Needing 9.0 seconds to hit 60 miles per hour from rest, the Clarity is not only almost precisely as accelerative as Honda claims, but it's also more than a second quicker than the Toyota and about as quick as the average modern four-cylinder diesel executive saloon. In fact, the Clarity not only neatly avoids being vulnerable to criticism for its performance, 
but it actually does a better job than a conventionally fueled rival in one or two ways, too. Because the car's electric motor drives the wheels directly and therefore peak torque is behind you once you're beyond around 40 miles per hour, performance feels strong at low speeds and increasingly less strong as you accelerate onwards. But pedal response is always excellent and that makes drivability first rate, particularly around town. There isn't really any accelerative increment over which the clarity is quicker than, say, a BMW 520D. It might have been over 0 to 20 miles per hour, but we don't measure that. But it is quicker to respond to small pedal position changes, and it's certainly quieter than the BMW at low speeds. 59 decibels at 30 miles per hour, although at 50 miles per hour the Mirai is even quieter. The car sounds, for the most part, like a battery power dev during normal driving. Its powertrain is almost noiseless at most pedal positions, with just the faintest whir starting up when you use the last 30% of the accelerator pedal's travel. It is also often present at high speed. Our test car was fitted with Michelin Cross Climate all-weather tires and it could be expected to run marginally more quietly, and to stop more quickly on tarmac, with a more typical road tire. Even so, the 48.8 meters stopping distance it recorded from 70 miles per hour to rest was very creditable for a car of this size and proves that Honda hasn't sacrificed a punitive amount of outright grip in order to cut the car's rolling resistance and to boost its cruising range. And range.